We would like to invite you on a small journey, a course through the nominated area to World Heritage, University of Coimbra, Alta and Sofia. It is about 35 acres to visit in five minutes, maybe seven, as many as the centuries of its history. Let us start by the school's courtyard, the heart of the University of Coimbra. Let's climb the 180 stairs of the recently restored Tower of the University for a thrilling 360-degree view. From the top of the tower, we see far more than just the city. From here, from the point of view that has become a world icon, we can watch a significant part of the European history and of the world history. But the history of the University of Coimbra did not start here. It was in the city downtown, in Sophia Street, Sophia, Sophie, as in wisdom, of course, that the history of the university began. A street that tore the urban medievalism apart and became a modern axis of its time. Together, 27 colleges brought life to this area where the history of the university started back in 1290. We are close to accomplish 725 years of existence. Back to Sofia, the street that begins by the Santa Cruz Church, National Pantheon, where King Afonso Henrique and King Sancho I are entombed. On that same location stands the famous Café Santa Cruz, an unrivaled and absolutely charismatic historical coffee shop that occupies a formal chapel next to Santa Cruz Church and where the Cruzios, the delicious monastery pastry, were reinvented. But let us climb the hill once more, for Coimbra is, as many other great cities, a city of hills. In the school's courtyard, we understand the course that transformed the royal palace, the territory of political power, into the house of another important form of power, knowledge. All we have to do is cross the iron door, take a leap in time, and travel through the small and big stories that enrich the site. The Grand Hall, presently known as Saloch Capilj, was the place where the political crisis of 1383 to 1385 was solved. The story of the small tile with a fox in the Faculty of Law that is punished with kicks for every student's flunk. This courtyard holds several layers of history. The Roman remains, the Moorish citadel, over which the building where most of the kings of the Portuguese First Dynasty were born, was erected. This place also holds the demonstration of richness and wisdom of the Baroque Library, considered by several international editions the most magnificent and beautiful university library of the world. Let us focus for a moment on this library that holds the world inside. Its ceilings have the continents painted on them. The chinoiserie display on the shelves scenes of the oriental life, the woods and the gold from Brazil, but especially the several thousands of books, over 53,000 to be exact. These books that contain the history of knowledge in the several scientific domains can still be read, including the first edition of Os Lusíadas and the precious Hebrew Bible from 1104. Outside the iron door facing the Rua Larga, we find physical evidences of the Pombalin Reformation. However, much more remains in the university than the easily identifiable buildings from the 18th century. The instruments, the books, the marks from the Enlightenment, the creation of new degrees, the abandonment of the scholastic system and the victory of experimentation, all of these remain. 
It is also possible to visit the most impressive physics cabinet of the world, part of the Science Museum, winner of several international prizes. Another masterpiece from Marquise of Pombal is the Botanical Garden, with its Linden Tree Avenue, its magnolias that burst in flower by February, and with a wood woven by species from several parts of the world. As a result of another core reformation that took place between the 40s and the 60s of the 20th century and ultimately changed the look of the university through an operation of complete urban reorganization of the area, the nucleus of the Second Republic sets the contemporaneity of Pol 1 of the University of Coimbra. The uptown area, once filled with winding streets, suffered partial destruction to open way to a modern university campus. The best artists of the time were called for its conception, construction and decoration. Cristina da Silva, Cassiano Branco and Almada Negreiros are but a few examples. This was the place where the university was centred before the last urban expansion that took it to other places of the city. It was possible to see the world and to study the world from it. This was the place that received the Portuguese-speaking elite, many of which have contributed for the affirmation of the Portuguese language. Antero de Quental, Camilo Pessanha, Eugénio de Castro, José Afonso, Essa de Queiroz, Alexandre Herculano, Manuel Alegre, to the recently awarded Nuno Camarneiro. Worshipped or cursed, Coimbra is not a city one can be indifferent to. It is now time to have this already world heritage recognized as such. As Miguel Torga, the world-famous writer and poet who lived in Coimbra most of his life used to say, the universal is the local with no walls. This may well be the lemma for this city. <laughs>